Hi book lovers, it's Jenny at Julia Baby Jen and this is my October wrap up. I stay out too late. Got nothing oh, in my so I didn't do too bad this month. Um, I'm gonna quickly go through the books because there's quite a few. Several of these I read in the beginning of the month for some readathons, and I already did readathon wrap ups for those. So I'm not gonna talk a lot about those books. I'll just refer you to the links below in the description box uh, on those wrap ups if you wanna hear more about these books. So I'm gonna start out with those. First off, I participated in the A Yearathon readathon at the beginning of the month, which they do every month, and this uh, month's theme was mental health. Uh, so I read. Speak by Lori Hulse Anderson. I did enjoy this. I gave this four stars. Faking Normal by Courtney C. Stevens. I kind of had hopes for this one and didn't quite meet those. It was still a good read. I gave it three and a half stars. Crank by Ellen Hopkins. This was my favorite book out of the mental health books I read uh, that this that week. I really like this. It's written in verse. It's my very first Ellen Hopkins read ever. And I really liked it. I thought it was amazing, an amazing read. And I thought it was very brave of the author because she based a lot of this off of her own experience with her daughter uh, who was also addicted to crack. So, so yeah, this is pretty awesome. This is a pretty amazing eye-opening read for me. I'm definitely gonna be picking up more Ellen Hopkins. The Last Time We Say Goodbye by Cynthia Hand. This one I gave four and a half stars. I really love this story. It just suck, sucked me in so much. Um, again, I talked about this a lot more in my wrap up, so I will leave you the link to that below. But it's a very, very good contemporary. I loved it. Then I participated in the Seasons of Reading. Uh, what was it called? <laughs> I don't remember what it's called now. I keep thinking it's Spookathon, but it wasn't Spookathon, it was something different. Seasons of, oh, Frightful Reads, I, I think, was what it was called. And that one was really fun. Um, so for that one, I read As Red as Blood by Sally Simaka. Uh, this one was a three-star read for me, N not as good as I was hoping. I did a really long, in-depth discussion on this on one of my update videos, and I'll link that below if you want to know more about this one. Dearly Departed by Leah Habel. I gave this four stars. I really enjoyed this. Uh, it's actually a futuristic steampunk zombie read, and I really liked it. Ghost in Trouble by Carolyn Hart. This is an adult uh, paranormal mystery, and I enjoyed it more than I thought I would. It was a fun read. I gave this one three stars. And I did a reread of Miss Peregrine's Home for Peculiar Children by Ransom Riggs. Love this series so much. Five star read for me. Oh, I, just, I just adore this series. And then I did a reread of Hollow City, which is the sequel, and I like this one even more than the first one. And it was just as good the second time, five stars. And I didn't get it done for the readathon, but I did right after the readathon pick up Library of Souls by Ransom Riggs. This was my first time reading the conclusion, and I adored it. I thought it was wonderful. I really like how how it tied everything up. I really feel like the story arc in this series is really well done, and I am going to do a series review on it sometime soon because I really do want to talk more about these books but oh and I don't want to give away any spoilers now so I'm not going to talk too much about this except to say that it was an amazing conclusion and I loved it five stars all right the rest of the books I will talk a little more about um, first of all I did a reread of Air of Fire by Sarah J Moss I love this story so much and it was only my second time reading it I tend to reread Throne of Glass quite a bit but I hadn't reread this one yet so I was glad I did because there's a lot of things I forgot about and I think I really needed it to get into Queen of Shadows and oh just so good um, there isn't a lot I can talk about with this one without giving away spoilers for the first book because this is the third in the series uh, but it's epic, it's amazing, introduces all kinds of new characters to the story arc, which I really liked. Uh, a lot of people complained about that a little bit when it came out, but I thought it was awesome because the characters that were introduced are amazing. I love Rowan, I love Manon. Who was the other one? Oh, Sorcha, who I wasn't real, real fond of, but I did like that Dorian got to have a little romance. I think he desperately needed that. I mean, I know he had he had romance. He had tons of girls throwing themselves at his feet, but he needed someone who could keep up with him, and Sorsha could do that. So I kind of really liked that little story arc in the story, and 
oh, the ending to that is just heartbreaking. But anyway, so I just really enjoyed this. And I also really enjoyed uh, Selena, um, or Selena kind of coming into her own. She's really heartbroken at the end of the second book. And she's really down. And she's just existing by a thread. And I feel like this was her turn turning point, turnaround point to become who she's really meant to be. I really feel like this novel did that wonderfully. Kind of like, um, if I want to think of a good compa uh, comparison, would be Harry Potter. How he is after um, Goblet of Fire um, in the beginning of Order of Phoenix and people complain about how he's such a moody, raging teenager, but he just dealt with a ton of things and it was his turning point in his story arc where he starts to grow up a little bit more. Um, and I feel like this book did that uh, really well with Selena. So, yes, five stars. Love my reread of this. Then I have some library books I tackled. Um, I read Red's Untold Tale by Wendy Tolliver. This is the Once Upon a Time. Uh, so it's based off of the TV series. And I guess that there's a series of these. And this is the fourth in the series. But the first two are more graphic novel. I want to look it up on Goodreads. So I may pick those up sometime. But I really love Little Red Riding Hood. That story. I just love it. So, And I also like Once Upon a Time. Um, even though I don't watch this, this show that much. What I've seen of it I really like. So this was a fun read for me. I enjoyed it. It's a pretty quick uh, fairy tale fantasy vibe and I really like the twists on the fairy tale so that's fun. I gave this one four stars. Kingdom of, A Kingdom of Ashes by Rhiannon and Thomas. Uh, this is the sequel to A Wicked Thing and this whole uh, series is of, uh, like a Sleeping Beauty retelling um, with uh, a fantasy in a fantasy world. Obviously it's a fairy tale but uh, so this is the sequel to A Wicked Thing. This one the big focus of this book is dragons, and I adored that. I love the world building in this series, and I love where the story is going. I, I think that the, the actual plot itself is really amazing, and I love that. Um, I'm not as fond as a lot of the characters, and I feel like we're really missing some character development, except for a few uh, characters but for the most part I feel like the characters in this it's not the reason to read it so if you're more character driven this is pro series is probably not your thing but if you're fantasy and love good world building this one is definitely fun you just kind of have to ignore some of that and then just some of the um, how things seem a little convenient at times so there's a, it has some flaws but it's still a really fun read for me and this was a good sequel I gave it four stars and I'm excited for the conclusion I believe this is a trilogy. Yellow Brick War by Danielle Page. This is the third book in the Dorothy Must Die series and when I picked it up I thought it was actually the conclusion. I thought the Dorothy Must Die was was a trilogy and the way that this book is presented it looks like a final book to me. Yellow Brick I mean wouldn't you kind of think that that's the end of the series. I mean, maybe that's just me, but it isn't. There's going to be another book in the series, and I feel like that's really unnecessary. First of all, this is a really quick book. I really liked it, but not a lot happened in it. It was a lot of soul-searching by the main character, I think, and there were parts of it I really enjoyed. In this one, she's back in Kansas, and she's trying to find Dorothy's silver shoes in her old high school. And I kind of like that she got to go back to school and how she's changed so much and her perspective is different since she's been to Oz. And, and that was kind of cool. I really kind of enjoyed that. But there wasn't a lot of war in this. The very end, there was a big battle at the end. But it wasn't... I don't know. I feel like the end of the previous book, what was it? The Wicked Will Rise. I feel that one was way more intense than this one was. And that was only the second book. So... I feel like it was unnecessary to, to stretch this out to four books. I think they could have just combined the two. I haven't, obviously I haven't read the last book yet. It's not out. So maybe it's super huge and I'll think differently once I read it. But as of right now, I feel like it was a little unnecessary to stretch this on. And I'm guessing that might have been a publisher decision. Uh, but I'm not real thrilled about that. As far as this book, it was pretty good. Um, I gave it three and a half stars. Like I said, there were parts of it I really loved, but... Yeah, it's, I think the first two books were way better than this one. So, 
That's just my opinion on that. Tales of the Peculiar by Ransom Riggs. I found this at the library and I was so happy because I haven't bought it yet. And I just finished uh, Library of Souls not long ago in the month and I found this. And I was like, yay, I can read this. So this is actually like a companion to the series. And so in the series, uh, uh, Miss Peregrine has these books called Tales of the Peculiar. And they're like, it's kind of like Tales of Beetle the Bard and Harry Potter. Like like stories of how the peculiar originated you know fairy tale type things from the beginning stories so some of them are um are not real like accurate you know what i mean like how things get stretched or twisted in the retellings uh one of the peculiar children who is a scholar actually writes this book so it looks like it's written by him throughout and it's basically him retelling these old some of these stories not all of them but there's some I think there was 10 stories in here they're short stories the stories themselves were great they were super creepy I thought this was a perfect book for this time of year it's oh they were really creepy stories and I really like them one or two of them are mentioned uh, in the series so you'll recognize those but several of them are not and I just I just loved it if you love Miss Peregrine's I think this is a great book to read it's a great companion book it's a pretty quick read and it's really fun and I love reading short stories anyway so yeah I love the imagination of Ransom Riggs now in this one and all the other series they have those photographs uh, uh, in them you know to add to the story this does not have those this has illustrations by a, an illustrator who did them so there's only a few but so he did illustrations to it so this one feels more like a fairy tale book and that's kind of fun too so it's a little different the only illustrations are or the photographs are in the very back which is the peculiar child who writes this so it's a photograph it's his biography because he wrote this book so I think that's really fun um, so yeah I really liked this four stars it was a fun companion read Emerald Green by Kirsten Gear this is the third and final book in the Ruby Red trilogy or uh, yeah the Ruby Red trilogy uh, this is a time travel trilogy that takes place in London involving a conspiracy with this royal well royalty to them family this rich family um, I really enjoyed the first book a lot. I liked the second book okay. And the third book was also just an okay read for me. I gave it three and a half stars. I feel like it dragged quite a bit. Uh, there just wasn't quite as much action as I would hope for the last book. Um, and the ending seemed kind of easy. But it was a pretty good read. I enjoyed it. I really do like the main character in this series. The Silkworm by Robert Galbraith. This is actually, uh, which is actually a pseudonym for J.K. Rowling. Uh, this is the second book in the um, Corman Strike series, and I love this series. This book was not, I didn't like it quite as much as the first book, but I really did like it. It was a super creepy read. The murders that happen in here are really creepy. Uh, but the story itself I loved. I love Robin. She's such a great character, and of course I love Cormoran. So I can't wait to read the next in the series. This one I gave four and a half stars. The final book I read for uh, the month of October was Joseph was was Witches Pier by Josephine Angelini. This is the third and final book in the World Walkers uh, trilogy. Um, I love this trilogy. I think it's really awesome. It's a fun uh, concept and a nice mismatch of uh, genres. So I really enjoy that. I finished this one on Halloween, which is good because it's a witch book. I gave it three and a half stars. Um, the first half of it was really slow and dragging. Uh, but the ending was really awesome. I love the ending to this. So I think it's awesome. Well, I think this is a pretty worthwhile trilogy to read, especially if you like witches and if you like alternate realities, which is what this is about. My biggest gripe about this series is that it has the, the whole trope about a bunch of hot guys are surrounding one girl and they're not all in love with her or anything. There's only two that are. Only two. But, like, yeah, like, it's all about, you know, them picking her up and carrying her to safety. And there's a lot of that in there. And at times I felt like rolling my eyes. It got to be a bit much. So that's my biggest complaint. And then, of course, in this one, I feel like there wasn't enough action. The previous two, there was a ton of action. So, um, but the ending was good. It's a pretty worthwhile series. It's just, uh, it's not the best I've ever read, but it was still fun.
So that is what I read for October, which is a pretty decent month. Not as much on my, didn't get as much read as I'd hoped, but uh, that's okay. It was still a good reading month. I had fun. Uh, leave me any comments below on what you read in October um, or what you think about any of these books. I would love to know. I hope everyone has a good day and I will talk to you later. Bye. This one I gave four and a... Oh, come on, Kindle. So I really enjoyed that.